title of this message will be called uh, Cosmic Conflict. The back, backdrop for this message is borrowed uh, from a very known book that I would encourage each one of you to read called The Unseen Realm by Dr. Michael uh, Heiser. Um, it will really kind of change your perspective on understanding the spiritual world or shift your perspective on understanding the spiritual world. Um, all of the notes from the message are on Bible app. If you use the YouVersion Bible app, you can go to more events and then follow the notes through. This will be a different message that I typically preach. Um, I will go point by point and I'm going to warn you right away that I have 10 of them. I usually have three. Most of you know my, my principle, the, like I followed the principle of the Trinity, three points, <laughs> no more than three. But today is going to be just layer on layer. The reason why I'm going to speak in, on this topic, I really want us to have a background and a backdrop for the vision that we have to see the world impacted for Christ. Secondly, I want to help people who are personally under spiritual attack today to receive some encouragement and practical steps on how to battle. And thirdly, I do want to bring warning to people who don't want to evangelize, but they simply want to take trips to second heavens and keep binding and loosing things and closing and opening gates. Some of you have no idea what I just said. It will make sense in just a moment. First and foremost, let's open our Bible to Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 8 and 9. I will read from ESV translation. When the Most High gave to the nations their inheritance, when He divided mankind, He fixed the borders of the peoples according to the number of the sons of God. But the Lord's portion is His people, Jacob His allotted heritage. NLV translation says, when the Most High assigned lands to the nations, when He divided up the human race, He established the boundaries of the peoples according to the number in His heavenly court. Number one, God is the one that scattered everyone over the face of all the earth. When humanity did not want to scatter and populate the earth, but gather together and build a name for themselves, God came down and confused the languages, which is why we have many languages. And He caused everyone to be scattered. Now, number two, God divided nations and gave them to His sons. Now let's look and pull the curtain and see what is happening in the spiritual realm. We see in book of Genesis that God scatters the nations. But in Deuteronomy, Moses has a revelation from God and gives an insight to what is happening in the spiritual realm when God is meeting with his divine consul. So you know how sometimes people have companies have board meetings or they have a consul meeting. So God has his own. Bible talks about God's spiritual consul in many other references. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, it uses this phrase that God divides the nations and then God assigns different portions, different nations to his sons. Now if you're reading New King James Version, it says he divided these nations according to the number of the children of Israel. But most of New King James versions will have a little dot around that and it will say the sons of God. The original language as well as Dead Sea Scrolls confirm that in the original language it's talking about the sons of God that God divided territories to. And it would make sense because when God split and sent everybody out to different territories, Israel didn't exist yet. So let's look at, let's pull back the curtain. In the spiritual realm, God is gathering with His spiritual family in heaven. And He's pretty much giving each one of His sons different territories, different nations to rule and guide. And God is saying there will be a nation, Israel, that I will oversee. I will personally take it as my special people. And for those of us, we know when Abraham came to be and then God revealed himself to Abraham, he called him out of the Ur of Chaldeans. And then he says that I will build a nation out of you and I will personally be committed to you. God did not do that to any other nation until the coming of Jesus Christ. Are we still on the same page with me? Okay. Number three, God's sons, these beings, spiritual beings who were in charge of these nations went rogue. They went bad. They got corrupted. And they started to create injustice, war, hate 
abuse and all kinds of sin in these nations which if you read that if you know anything about the history of different nations and tribes you will know that to be true if you read the bible the old testament you will see that every nation except israel and israel half of the time these nations did some really bad things they worshiped other idols where did that come from let's read in psalm in psalm 82 verses 1 and 2 it says god has taken his place in the divine council in the midst of the gods he holds judgment how long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked selah so this is later now we see god in his council he separates nations gives them to his sons now in psalm this is years years later david is prophetically speaking he's saying god has gathered his council again and now he's rebuking these sons now it says gods the word gods here is elohim elohim is not the name for god creator it's the name for spiritual beings in heaven so God is also part of that spiritual being but God is the creator all of his created spiritual beings are called Elohims but the translators translate it as God because that is also one of the translations that you can use but it's pretty much the spiritual beings that God is looking in his divine like a council meeting and God is rebuking them and this is what he's rebuking them for he said you guys are you guys are screwing up you guys are messing up you're you're doing unjustly things you're doing wrong things he's rebuking his sons now i know some of you already if you're following what i'm saying it's frying your theology or your understanding you're like well i thought that the devil just fell with everybody from heaven because that's what it says in revelation where you know his tail drew one-thirds of angels with him and that's where the devil came in with his kingdom and that's how it was established a lot of scholars disagree that that reference in Revelation refers to the falling of Satan with those angels. That it refers to the, the falling of Satan's place of influence in heaven at the death of Jesus Christ. But there were more than one rebellion that has happened. Read the unseen realm for more information. I'm just gonna do a shortened version and just a very shortened version concerning the principalities. So God is rebuking these sons. Now what charismatics did a lot of times is they taken they've taken this verse and they said well God is meeting in his spiritual family and God is calling us his little gods because in that chapter a little bit later you will see another reference to this and it says the following 82 Psalm verse 6 and 7 I said you are gods sons of the most high all of you nevertheless like men you shall die and fall like any prince and so this is sometimes used out of context to look at us and to say hey all of us are little gods with just a little g but the problem is that we are not gods we are not divine beings we are human beings and and we should be proud of that like not in an arrogant proud way but we we are God's created human beings made in the image and likeness of God we are not little gods even those of us who are saved and those of you who speak in tongues faster than a rocket you're still a human being it doesn't matter how much power you walk in you're still a human being you're not a little god okay there is a god he has a spiritual family and the spiritual family they're called elohims they're called spiritual beings but you and i are not one of them we are different than them we're still god's children we're just not those children plus some of those children went bad <laughs> so you don't want to be there all right these god's sons these God's spiritual beings placed over the nations one of their sins is they caused the nations to worship them instead of God now just just few more layers and then I'm gonna get rowdy Deuteronomy 32 uh, verse 16 and verse 17 they provoked him to jealousy with foreign gods with abominations they provoked him to anger they sacrificed to demons not to God to gods they did not know to new gods new arrivals that the fathers did not fear so now it's speaking to Israel that Israel under the influence of the gods of other nations started to sacrifice to these other gods 
Now I want you to notice that Moses is not saying that they only sacrifice to idols. They sacrifice to spiritual beings. They sacrifice and then it says new gods, new arrivals and to demons. These were more than wooden statues. These were more than a figment of someone's imagination. I want you to notice that every nation was drawn to some kind of a spirituality. Atheism was not the dominant thing in the history of human race. There was some kind of a way to connect with the spirit being. These sons that went rogue, these beings that went bad, they did not cause people to not believe in spiritual things. It's not possible because you are a spiritual being. It does not matter how much education you receive, it can't satisfy the yearning for another realm. It doesn't matter how much money you receive, you have a yearning for eternity. That's why no matter how much love, good you receive in this world, there is always an ache for more. Why? Because you were created by an eternal God for eternity. And earth will never satisfy everything good on earth will never be good enough why because you were made for eternity you were made for another realm and there you will be fully satisfied it's almost like this earth and this realm is just to whetten your appetite and prepare you for another world so what these gods these principalities ruling territorial spirits did is they started to manipulate and lie to people by causing these people to satisfy that spiritual longing with an alternative means with false gods and they drew that worship for themselves by making themselves into those spirit beings that the humanity worshiped that's why you look at Greeks you look at Romans you look at every nation they had some kind of a god they worshiped these spirit beings they begin to draw worship for themselves instead of giving worship to God let's go a little bit further when God judged Egypt he didn't just judge Pharaoh he judged the gods of Egypt number five God judged the gods of Egypt for mistreating his children Exodus chapter 12 verse 12 I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment now Egypt had gods like frogs they had they had so many gods their dominant gods were pretty much resembled certain things in nature God wasn't just going in there striking a frog a frog is not a competition to God okay nor is hail, nor is uh, river Nile, nor, nor is the sun. These, these things God created, they are not a match. They're not in rebellion to Him. Nature doesn't rebel against God. Nature is under a curse, but nature is not the one that is opposing Him. They were spiritual beings that caused people to worship nature because by worshiping nature they worship them and God says as I'm pulling my people out of Egypt I will punish Pharaoh because he still had a choice to hurt my people or not to hurt my people so I will punish him for his choices and then I will go and I will punish these spiritual beings over the territory of Egypt and I will execute judgment on them is everybody still with me let's go to one more step further number six territorial principalities oppose God's work on the earth Daniel chapter 10 verse 13 it says but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days and behold Mike Michael and that's not your cousin Mike um, this was not Daniel's third cousin Mike Michael and it gives us more information one of the chief princes so it's speaking of God's princes came to help me for I have been left alone there with the kings of Persia and if you read a few verses later Daniel chapter 10 verse 20 it says that then he said do you know why I have come to you and now I must return to fight with the prince of Persia now I want you to notice Daniel is not the one fighting the prince a prince can take on a prince not Daniel Daniel is not that prince he says I will take on 
prince of Persia and when I have gone forth indeed the prince of Greece will come now this gives us almost like this understanding of a spiritual geography that there are ruling spiritual principalities over particular nations and Daniel had the revelation and that insight this helps us in our spiritual warfare I want you to notice here that this angel from God had a conflict and had resistance for 21 days he he wasn't resisted by the mere king who occupied the Persian Empire we see an, another instance where the angel came and hit Herod and instantly Herod died we see angels showing up and then the whole army of Assyrians who came against Israel was gone in the night a mere human being is no match for an angel so when an angel says I had a resistance for 21 days the angel is not referring to a king who has some kind of a supernatural power it's referring to a spiritual entity over the region that controlled that region legally that the angel had no had an issue getting through for example um, right now in Poland you can't get to Ukraine if you have a word Russian in your passport we had a team that went in there and you know there's there's the, because of the conflict there's a lot of also uh, tension between Ukrainians and Russians you know we had our team wanted to go into Ukraine through the border and my wife has a word Russian in her passport you won't go through Ukrainians won't let you because of the amount of love that they have for Russians right now okay so no matter how much you have a desire no matter how much you want to do good you can't because they control the border same thing different territories were given legal permission to these spiritual entities and no matter that the fact that the angels of God have greater power and all of this stuff and God is the ruler they had a hard time getting through until the prayers of people in those territories persevered so that was before the coming of Jesus but I'm just letting you know that these spiritual principalities they're not a joke they're not a match for you and I even though yes God has all the power you and I don't okay these are not demons we're not talking about little low low level demons that we were given authority over this this is a different game so let's go a little bit further into point number seven Jesus's death disarmed principalities and powers okay now all right if you stayed with me up to now this is the good part that's coming now Jesus says in Colossians the Bible says in Colossians chapter 2 verse 15 it says having disarmed principalities and powers he made public spectacle of them triumphing over them in it all right until the coming of Jesus every principality had a legal right for those nations they were assigned by God over those nations they just went bad these nations pledged their allegiance to them by worshiping different gods and every nation has a different god and different way that they worship some kind of a deity and this gives the legal right to these principalities to rule over these nations and you can stand there and name it can name it and claim it confess it possess it blab it grab you can do all of that it doesn't matter why it's the same thing as if you would think that just because you make a Facebook post that Donald Trump was no longer a president you can say he's not my president it doesn't matter you can say that about Biden right now say Biden is not my president it doesn't matter he's still your president I vote to remove Joe Biden okay it didn't change anything you can stand with a sign and say I dethrone Joe Biden I bind Joe Biden the only thing you did is wasted some time it won't do anything the only way to remove a president is through an impeachment or there's a revolution that happens but you can't just stand there and think that because you don't like it you can remove it by a post people did that with Trump people are doing that with Biden you can you might not like guest price like that's it I don't want the president now it's different between not wanting a president and actually removing him 
The same thing with principalities. We can't just simply stay there and say, well, I don't like this principality. Uh, well, of course, I, I hope you don't like this principality. It's not doing anything good. But you can't remove it because you don't like it. It has a legal status there. And the legal status was given there by the majority of people who have chosen to worship this particular thing. So us Christians now who are like, well, but I'm going to go bind it. Well, you can bind it until you turn blue. It doesn't change much. It doesn't work like that. He says, what do you mean? So all of the stuff that we bound in the principality over Tri-Cities and everything, it doesn't work? Did it? Nope. We did it. Why? Because, well, we meant it well. <laughs> yeah. We don't do it anymore though. Um, I am not a pro-gun or anti-gun. I'm a neutral. I grew up in a family where we had no guns. Okay, my uh, ancestors, they didn't go to army to hold bare arms. Partially it's because you had to make an oath in a Soviet army to align yourself with the beliefs of Soviets. And that's how you hold arms in a Soviet army. So my dad, my, my, uh, my parents, they would, they would not agree with those oaths so they would go to an army but they will not bear arms even when my grandma became a citizen of the united states i remember i had to write a letter uh, to the united states government that my grandma will not hold arms well i don't want my grandma to hold arms no offense okay so just just fyi but uh but she would not hold arms so just it's just always been my thing i'm not a gun person but it changed this week so all of you gun lovers i'm on your side this week those of you who are anti guns i still in the heart i'm with you all right so so this week what happened is that i'm meeting with one of our board members at the church it was for a different thing and then this board member he says before we go and we meet discuss very important spiritual things he's like he, he he asked me to come to the back of his car and for a ukrainian to be called to the back of his car it's usually something is going to be shady <laughs> okay it's just ukraine you know for those of you who know anything about ukraine it's a pretty corrupt country actually at least in the government so i was like Ooh. and so i go up there he he opens the trunk and then he he opens and he shows me a shotgun and i was like well i know you have guns and he's like no this one is yours and i i stand there and i and i'm thinking am i being tempted am i being tested or am i being tried so I don't know how to react. I don't know how to say thank you or uh, uh, I, 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 I don't do. And so, and, he, and he, he's seeing my hesitancy and he's like, pastor, you need it. It's for you. Trust me. And he's way older than me. He's one of our board members and I'm submissive to our board. And so I said, okay, I, I'll take it. He's like, oh no, you can't take it. We have to go to the particular place and we have to actually legally transfer it to you. It's serious business. I said okay so he's like we'll go afternoon and we'll go to this particular place so we're going to this particular place and uh, and so and I'm being exposed to a world of guns I'm putting my social security the whole nine yards I mean they're doing all kinds of tests and then one police officer you know walks into the of course check some bullets I mean they, there's a language that they speak I have no idea like they're speaking like this gun and that I mean I just know long gun short gun big bullets small bullets and so but there's everything that there's there's a whole science to it and so and I'm just standing there asking very dumb questions I mean people are they're, they're obvious I have no idea about guns I mean I could tell you about algorithms and other stuff but it's just not about this area and so police officer then Boyd is saying this gun what is what police officer is carrying I was like oh wow so you can actually have the same gun that the police officer has they're like yeah you can have actually a similar gun that the police officer has and then Boyd begins to evangelize me so because getting a shotgun is not enough he says you, you want to uh, try this one and I said no I, I don't want guns I just I, I'm taking this gift because of just being nice to you but I'm standing there there's nothing else to do so I was like I'll try it he pulls it I'm like no this one's too short so I went through a few guns and and I end up buying one I mean I didn't get it I just paid for it so I still have a chance to return or cancel the payment because it takes 10 days to actually get a gun legally and so now let's just a moment for a moment imagine that I got I will get the gun okay it will be exactly the same gun that the police officer in Pasco has how many of you know that having the same gun does not mean I have the same authority now the guns they give to citizens are mainly for self-defense. 
the guns that police officers have they are licensed not only for self-defense they're licensed to chase criminals and they're, they're licensed to use them not just in their house but on the street now if I carry and I don't uh, conceal weapon and I come here to church today and I'm going to start executing justice as a little daredevil or it's like some kind of a Batman okay and just pretty much walking around and I'm just executing justice because I have just I'm noticing evil in our city how many of you know that only works in movies in real life you will go to jail for using the same power and authority that somebody else was given over the criminal world that you have limited to self-defense and in your own house my friend just because the Bible says all authority is given to us over the enemy it does not mean that there is no limit to the scope of that authority for example the Bible is very clear we are to cast out demons out of people there is not one reference that we are called to go to a city and cast out a demon out of a region now you can get trigger happy and you can see that it works with casting out a demon out of a person you're like man let me try to see if it works on the level of the city and people do that I know people I know people I did it why trigger happy because you discover spiritual warfare and then you're listening to somebody who's been in satanism or somebody who's been in that world and they're like man I'm gonna go what bind the witches I'm gonna do all of this stuff and I'm gonna like you know astro almost like astro project which is a witchcraft by the way like when I'm leaving my body and go into a spiritual gate close the gate open the gate and I'm gonna stop the traffic of drugs I'm gonna stop the human trafficking in the city and I'm gonna go back into my body and my city will be magically changed and transformed now this may seem spiritual and this may seem to a person who does not know too much of the Bible attractive but my friend not only that is wrong it's dangerous every gun owner in here knows you can't walk around East Pasco locking people up without being a police officer and just because you got the same gun that a police officer has you don't have the same authority so you have the same authority that Jesus has you were given that you just don't have the same assignment that Jesus had even Jesus not once bound a principality when he was going to the place where the demonized people were there two demonized men were there and the principality was obvious caused the storm because he rebuked the storm but not the principality so he rebuked what the principality did not the principality itself why they got the legal authority over that region you can't mess with that not until he died on a cross and when he died on the cross he took the legal authority from the principalities he disarmed them now what does that mean for us come on let's give the lord clap offering hallelujah number eight number eight Jesus now holds all legal authority over the nations and that means we are sent to reclaim them for Jesus Matthew 28 verse 18 and 19 says the following and we we miss this when we talk about the great commission before Jesus talked about the great commission he says this to the disciples all the authority is given to me in heaven and on earth all authority means every authority that means every nation every tongue every city now Jesus has the legal authority over this planet you may say but did God not was not the owner over the earth he was not sovereign of course he was sovereign a hundred percent but authority that Jesus God by dying on the cross being the son of man now he holds the legal authority as the son of God the son of man over this earth and you were like well that's awesome Jesus so what do we do do we go like kick the devil's butt now Jesus says yeah go and preach no I want to bind <laughs> I don't want to go make and make disciples I want to go make the devil mad I want to go bind the spirit of drugs over my city Jesus says if you want to now do something about this authority that I have I want you to go into all the nations have you noticed in the Old Testament not once God gave Israel an assignment to evangelize nations he only told them to stay away from them impacting their way of life he never told them to influence those nations because the authority over those nations was still over those rogue gods but when the authority was taken away from them and Jesus says now the nations are mine 
you guys go into the nations and I want you to begin to make disciples go into America go into Mexico go into Brazil go into Russia go into Ukraine go to every nation there is not one nation that you don't have legal authority now to begin to win people toward me now will the authority will the principalities put up a fight of course they will because these principalities are not gone these principalities did not disappear but now we are on the offensive and we're doing the intruding now we're doing the fighting we are not coming in and trying to hunker down in, the, in some kind of a basement and wait for the coming of the Antichrist, my friend. No, no, no. The Antichrist will come. He's going to do the bad boy. He's going to do the bad stuff. But until that boy, bad boy comes, Jesus says, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. That means we are on the offensive side. The devil is losing slowly but surely. Amen. Amen. Number nine. Now let's get to a little bit more personal. Our authority against ruling principality is limited to self-defense not direct confrontation on their domain let's go to ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11. this is one of the most famous verses that is used concerning the spiritual warfare with principalities and i would like you to read this now with this kind of a new perspective that i just gave you the backdrop for number uh, verse 10 finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil have you noticed it doesn't say that you may win or fight but stand somebody say stand verse 11 or verse 12 I apologize for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places this is not talking about low ranking demons this is talking about a high level spiritual forces that are currently still in play and you will think okay awesome so we are wrestling against this great what do i do verse 13 therefore take up the whole armor of god that you may able, be able to bind every principality and crush every spiritual host in the wicked places now I'm making this up that's not what the Bible says the Bible says therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand somebody say withstand so I stand then if I keep standing I withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand somebody say stand so I stand to withstand to stand a lot of standing a lot of not, a lot of us have been folding not standing though a lot of standing and then it says again stand therefore it's interesting the most amazing portion of scripture about spiritual warfare against principalities has nothing to say about the fighting them but standing when they're personally and directly assaulting you that's interesting stand therefore having girded your waist with truth having put on the breastplate of righteousness having shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints and for me that the utterance might be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel I know this was handful but maybe you are here right now and you are under a direct personal assault of spiritual forces and maybe you're sensing perhaps due to the assignment of God upon your life due to the ministry that you are carrying fulfilling or about to carry something someone wants to stop you and you feel like it's not like some kind of a low-ranking demon but it's there, there's an attack that is happening against your life what do you do personally you can defend yourself and these are the practical steps you can defend yourself sometimes you will feel it for those of you who walk with Christ you're walking in the Holy Spirit you'll know and the sister shared really well when it's a demon within when it's a demon without and when it's a regional spiritual attack 
that it's, it has to do with your destiny it has to do with your call what do you do then it's interesting it doesn't say first to pray because when you're under that kind of an intense battle a lot of times you can't pray and if you do the prayer doesn't go further than the ceiling and it's not because you haven't broken through it's because with that intensity of attack your winning is not retreating your winning is not folding breaking that is your winning just standing the greatest apostle said that is how you win at that point at that point not even praying at that point you just simply you're standing in who you are I experienced that this week Monday Tuesday Wednesday partially was because we were fasting I don't know if it's because my wife being there and the exposure that the ministry started to get with media and with other things and I know where this is headed I felt and it was discernment that I felt in, in my heart that this was not some kind of a personal attack on me this was something else that was coming and it's literally first it wanted me to stop fasting it wanted me to quit the headaches were not even there but this this pressure like somebody put a, a heavy semi on my back and wanted to just just break me and all I had to do is to say I quit not quit ministry not quit God just just fold stop whatever I've committed to do for those three days and I've been in this situation before it doesn't happen all the time and I and I know when this is happening and this is the verse that saves me every time come on, come on, come on. I come home it was late at night and I'm trying to pray and literally words can't even come out of my mouth yeah, yeah. I'm like I, my mind is like my emotions are all over the place my mind is all over the place and I know hell just broke loose and I'm trying to hold on to some kind of a promise and literally I feel like everything is gone at that point you know and it's it's, it's easy at that point to reach out to somebody but for me I know what I gotta do Vlad stand until you can withstand until you can have done all stand and it says evil day meaning this time this whole thing has a clock and for me on Thursday morning is when something reset I woke up the sky was brighter everything something just shifted something just shifted and I want to encourage you today if you are in that season and maybe you're trying to use everything else you've used during your normal times to get breakthrough you turn on your famous Jehovah Jireh song or your Jireh song by the elevation or you turn on some other thing you're like man this is not clicking I feel stuck right now stand stand your ground but I don't feel God stand your ground but hell is breaking loose stand your ground stand on God's word but the second thing that you need to do personally and I need to do personally and this is hard I used to teach more on that and I believe in that about the spiritual armor but I want to bring spiritual armor to a very practical level it says having he said standing put on the armor and a lot of us what we do is we over spiritualize spiritual armor we make spiritual armor as some kind of a spiritual thing that we put on by confessing and that is but honestly let's make it practical what the Lord is saying is under that heavy pressure be a Christian belt meaning be honest truth truth is not oh Jesus is my truth yes he is but it also means that while you're under heavy pressure don't exaggerate and don't lie uh, righteousness means integrity it's tax this season good time not to cheat and lie mm -hmm. righteousness so this is not just oh Jesus is my righteousness uh, yes and you also need to be righteous you become extremely vulnerable to not just the attacks but penetration of the enemy who are is who is in the spiritual realm when during a tense moments you begin to cave into living godless life and a lot of times we yield to that because we say the pressure is too hard and therefore I'm going to medicate or numb myself by either doing this or doing that be honest have integrity have faith don't trust in your feelings at that point remind yourself you are saved put on the word of God meaning read the scripture maybe stop the TikTok. just the scripture feed yourself with scripture and that intense warfare with principalities against your life and destiny will subside yeah, come on, come on. but not forever the moment you're about to hit a new season in your calling yeah. they will come again yeah, 
the moment you enter or you're about to enter into a new territory they will come again why because that is how they personally attack you but the Lord has given us weapons that we can defend ourselves with and a lot of us what we do is that it's better to come to a prayer meeting and say I bind the principality over Seattle and then that principality is going to hit you tomorrow and we're lying through our teeth and that's not how we win this battle it's not about what I do in prayer against this principality it's what I do after prayer do I stand my ground do I live my Christian faith out amen and then do I pray he says at the end he says to prayerfully consider to prayerfully to pray now some of you may say Vlad you know but I want to pray I want to go bind yeah go deliver the captives let's preach the gospel a lot of times what I've noticed is that we hide our obedience behind our prayer prayer is not a substitute for obedience to great commission just because I pray and fast and God called me to the ministry of intercession it does not mean that the part about sharing my faith is limited to intercession I have to share my faith because that is the way I expand the kingdom of God we can't just sit here today and say we bind the principality over the new church where there's a lot of drugs and then nobody goes there to share the gospel that's why we're going there to bring food we're going there to bring goods and to share the gospel because it's not enough to pray for that neighborhood if we don't go there and actually reclaim that neighborhood for Jesus by breaking down strongholds in the minds of people of lies and drugs by preaching the good news and they accept Jesus and team Jesus gets one more soul amen so I just want you to be encouraged if you're in a tough spiritual battle right now it won't be like this all the time the devil will leave the principalities will let go but typically these principalities do not attack anybody whose destiny is not a direct threat to them your destiny demons attack you because they just hate you principalities attack you because you are a direct threat either what you're about to do what you are doing or something else that is happening behind the scenes that God is using you that you don't even realize the impact you're making in the realm of the spirit and they will cause a fight Paul says we wrestle against them but it's interesting that the weapons of self-defense are not the ones that we a lot of us have been using and the last thing I want to share with you I'm way past my time is we will replace these principalities when Jesus comes and we will rule with Jesus over the nations I will not give you all of the verses I'm just going to read just one verse in Revelation chapter 2 verse 26 and he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end to him I will give power over the nations so that means one of the reasons these principalities are also tick is because the job they got fired from you already got hired for I don't know part of me just wants to say take that devil but yeah so um, you got hired already for that and the Bible says that because you overcome and you keep God's works till the end now this is not just every Christian this is he who lives like a Christian and serves other people you will be ruling with Jesus not playing harp in heaven and just floating with little um, with just on the clouds you're actually going to be doing work with the Lord and you're going to rule and reign with the Lord Jesus Christ and we will give all the glory to our King amen because we worship now we will worship later we will worship forever hey thanks for watching this video if you enjoyed this content and this was a blessing to you would you help us and hit thumbs up so that it could help more people to discover this video it costs you nothing but it can go a long way to help with the algorithm as well as if you're not subscribed to our channel hit subscribe click on the bell so that you can be reminded each time that we upload videos thank you so much for being a part of this community if you're interested in learning more about hungry gen our internship our conferences deliverance and so many other things go to hungrygen.com for more information and as always remember better is not good enough the best is yet to come.